You ever have one of those days where you should have just stayed in bed? That's kind of how my day is going today. Hey guys, good morning. Today on Vintage Speed Garage, we're going to be tearing into the voodoo that is inside of our four barrel Autolite 4100 carburetor here from our 66 Mustang project. This carb is completely froze up. Uh, we can't operate the butterflies. It's it's gummed up, it's varnished up, hopefully it's not rusted up. And we're going to crack into it here, we're going to replace all the seals, all the gaskets, um, diaphragms for the accelerator pump on the primary as well as the secondary pump. And uh, I'm going to show you how to tear one of these apart, inspect it, and hopefully, fingers crossed, get it put back together so we can uh, make some noise here on our 66 Mustang project, so stay tuned. Alright guys, so this is our Autolite 4100. Uh, it's basically just a simple um, OEM four barrel carburetor that uh, they used during the 60s. Uh, I think they used this carburetor 65 and 66. 67 they went to a revised version of this carb. Um, so we're going to tear it down uh, and replace all the gaskets, all the diaphragms, seals and O-rings inside the carburetor. So hopefully we can make this thing work efficiently and uh, make some power with it. Um, it's not like a Holly or a Edelbrock carb or a Demon carb or something that would have uh, fine tunable adjustments in uh, all of your uh, fuel circuits. So we kind of have to work with what we have and um, that should be fine. And for most stock applications such as our small block motor here um, you really don't need all those fine tuning um, circuits. For our uh, Mustang project here, this is going to be just fine. So our carburetor here has been sitting for a long time and uh, all of the butterflies here are completely seized up. Now I don't know uh, whether the butterfly itself is seized into the throat of the carburetor or if the shaft is corroded internally inside the body of the carburetor. If that's the case, uh, you know, we might be searching for a new carb here. Um, Hopefully that's not the case. Hopefully the shaft can be cleaned up, the bore inside the carb is good, and we don't have any damage in there that's going to prevent using this shaft inside this uh, carburetor body. Basically the way this four barrel or any OEM four barrel works is once the fuel is in the float bowls that's regulated by the float level height, um, a low float level will, uh, will give you a low amount of fuel inside the bowl and you could potentially run the bowl dry. So float level is important. Uh, the bowls are vented through these vents here on the top of the uh, carburetor. And this is the uh, choke assembly. This one, uh, I've already replaced the choke with an electric choke um, as opposed to the uh, exhaust manifold heating tube that would normally run up here and connect into the, uh, into the choke coil and operate our flap on our choke. Um, the electric version basically does the same thing, but it uses uh, electrical current supplied normally off of the coil or some other switch 12 volt uh, circuit to uh, activate and operate the coil inside. As it heats up, it opens uh, the butterfly here on our choke and uh, allows more air into the carburetor. One of the main components here that gives us uh, good acceleration off of the line is our accelerator pump. Uh, this is our primary accelerator pump here at the at the front of our carburetor. Carburetor fuel inlet is here. Uh, front accelerator pump for the primary circuit is here. Uh, it's linkage operated, so it's operated actually off of the uh, throttle shaft. The uh, linkages here are very simple push rod style linkages and have clips at the throttle shaft. Uh, the carburetor kit that I bought for this carburetor um, was supposed to come with everything that uh, Autolite 4100 requires. Unfortunately, uh, it did not come with our secondary um, or secondary pump diaphragm. I'm not sure why that is. I had to order that as a separate piece. Um, doesn't really make sense to me that a carburetor rebuild kit for one of these 4100s would not include um, the secondary pump diaphragm, but nonetheless, that's the case. So I do have it, um, and we're gonna go ahead and pull the secondary out as well. And you want to make sure that you have a big, wide-bladed screwdriver for the stubborn uh, carb body 
screws. Some of the screws here on our carburetor are already stripped out. Somebody's gone at it with a small screwdriver and uh, mangled some of these screws. Uh, if we run into a stubborn screw, you could go straight to the impact driver here, uh, which uses force. You hit it with a hammer and it turns your screws. Um, so it gives a lot of downward force from the hammer blow. At the same time, it forces rotation on the impact driver and will break loose those stubborn screws. This is the carburetor rebuild kit that I ordered for our Autolite 4100 here. It includes uh, all of the gaskets uh, for the body of the carburetor and the seals that we'll need internally as well as new uh, float jets to allow fuel into our float bowls and diaphragms for uh, our accelerator pump um, and some of the smaller circuits. It did not include the secondary uh, diaphragm so I had to order this separately. One of the nice things that's included here in the rebuild kit is a list of specifications by year. Uh, year make and model uh, of the carburetor or the vehicle that the carburetor was installed on and you have all of the factory preset settings for uh, positions for your linkages as well as um, uh, clearance settings for your butterflies and, uh, and, and throttle linkages uh, that need to be adjusted. Okay guys, well I let the parts sit overnight uh, in the tank, gave everything a good cleaning with some Scotch-Brite. Most, uh, most all the parts came out pretty good. So I've got uh, the body of the carb cleaned up, these shafts here are cleaned up and reinstalled, the springs back on the right orientation this time around. And now I've got to uh, clean our butterfly throttle plates and our screws get those loctited and reinstalled onto our shafts here and we should be good to go to reassemble the rest of the carburetor. These are valve here on the bottom of our carburetor uh, basically just threads in and then you put the gasket and the outside cover run your screws in. I also installed the mixture screws all of that on our primary circuit. Now I've got to install the uh, accelerator pump uh, and the secondary uh, pump as well and once those are done we can flip it over and start assembling the float bowls and put our main jets back into place. Now we are ready to install the accelerator pump. Um, important thing to note, don't forget the rubber check valve. Make sure you put that in first uh, and then your spring. I put the uh, large side of the spring in the body of the carburetor and the small end pushing against our lever arm, <coughs> well against our diaphragm which then pushes against our lever arm. And the way an accelerator pump works is it's just a rubber diaphragm here with the button on it that your lever arm on your outside cover uh, pushes against like this, which will give us just a little squirt of fuel uh, into our carburetor throat and helps with uh, acceleration off the line. Uh, add a drop of oil here onto our check valve and uh, put that in first, that goes into the center hole and just make sure it's seated all the way and to verify you can just look inside the float bowl here give it a little pull, don't tear it, just make sure that it's fully, fully seated and then our rubber diaphragm with the button out accelerator pump. So we just fit that into position, check that it's working and returning, and run our screws in. Make sure the linkage arm is on the proper side to, correct to, to connect to your throttle linkage. Uh, our linkage arm goes into our center or our inside hole on our lever arm and we'll connect here on our throttle linkage into the third hole on our throttle linkage from the bottom and then we have a uh, little retainer clip that will go on to that linkage arm and hold our accelerator pump linkage into place okay and once your clips on now your accelerator pump rod should not pop off here as you operate your pump you want to put your uh, your spring goes on the outside of your cover uh, on the 
back side here of our diaphragm like that. Hook your pin over your lever arm as long as you've ordered the right part and, uh, and install that then with your four screws into the body of your carburetor similar to the, uh, the primary. The only thing to bear in mind and to uh, make sure you get right is this hole here in the diaphragm needs to line up with the hole in your cover. Okay guys, new secondary diaphragm on the way. This time uh, the proper proper one. And we are going to start assembling our float bowls and we're going to start from the bottom up. So we're going to start with our primary jets and secondary jets. Um, primaries are smaller. In this case our primaries are 48 F's. Yeah, 48 F's. So they just thread into the bottom of the bowl. And the now the secondaries here are uh, hard for me to read. 56 F's. No gaskets, no check valves or anything in these jets. Okay, so now that our jets are in the bottom of our bowl, we'll put in our fuel valves or float valves or float jet. There's a lot of different names for them depending on your application. Uh, these do have a gasket, so make sure you put your gasket on there. And these are our float needles, okay, or float jet needle, um, depending on the terminology you're used to. In the world of motorcycle carburetors, they're called a float jet, float jet needle. All right, and the way this works is the clip here on our float is going to clip onto that float jet that we installed first and it's going to hold the float in place in case I guess in case you flip over upside down or something so that the float can't come loose now I've gone ahead and put our pins back in the same way they came out I pulled the pins out of the float bodies and took some steel wool to the uh, to the pins so that they would pivot nice and freely uh, we've tested the floats to make sure that they actually float and um, you'll notice in the body here that the float jet is offset to one side of the carburetor body. In this case, it's offset to the outer uh, limits of the body. So your pin has to be offset as well. So uh, if you keep the pins in place, when you uh, remove them, when you remove the floats, then you'll be sure to get the floats back in the way they can. Go ahead and put our needles into place. The needle just hangs on the tank. Be on, you want your clip on the outside of that so you can clip it onto that float jet. So just drop, hold the needle in place on the tang, drop it into its jet, and clip your, push your clip down into position on the jet. Go. All right. And just check and make sure your float can move freely. We have two properly installed floats. We've got our jets into place uh, and now we're ready to move on to our Venturi stacks. Not that hard, right? Okay, your Venturis are going to be sealed with a couple gaskets so make sure you get the gasket in the right orientation before you put your Venturi into place. If you want, you can lube these up with a little bit of oil. Now the primary Venturi stack is held in place with a fuel pin here. Looks like a bolt, but it's hollow and it's got two holes in it for fuel. Okay, this has a check valve at the bottom of it, so make sure you put your ball into place. Your check ball, which I just threw all over the place. There you go. Oh. All right. Almost lost that little guy. Drop her in. And then this little plunger slides into the, uh, the orifice here inside. And we thread her down into place there to hold our venturis down. Alright, drop our venturi into place through our gasket. Okay, there we go. Get our correct gasket for the charge uh, discharge nozzle here. Try and get that 
check valve plunger to go back into it and tighten her up. Oh yeah, you can see how that, that little shoulder on this one just mangled from somebody getting it hung up and just cranking the piss out of it until it, uh, until it bent all to hell. Alright, so get it in there, move it around, make sure it's seated fully before you start cranking your screw. Next thing we need to do is address float height. Before we put the top of the carburetor back on, we need to make sure that our floats are at the correct height. And uh, the way you do that is, in this case, they provide you a little scale that uh, you can use to check your float level against the body of the carburetor. And uh, in our case, the, the specification sheet here lists the stock setting for the uh, primary float level is 17, well, for both primary and secondary is 17 30 seconds. The performance setting is a half inch and 5 eighths. So a half inch on the primary, 5 eighths on the secondary, and that's the setting that we're going to use. That one is half inch. So that's right where we want it. The scale that they give us is uh, 1 32nd of an inch. So every tick is a 32nd. So we want 16 30 seconds, which is where, right where we're at here, which gives us a half inch. So the process is you hold the tang down until the needle is bottomed in the jet, or the float valve, whatever you want to call it. I call it a float jet because I build bikes. So I'm going to get my slide caliper, set it at 625 thousandths, which is 5 eighths of an inch and uh, we will adjust our float level on this secondary bolt. So I'm not a bomb 79 I don't have a bunch of bitchin uh, Sterrett calipers and uh, micrometers. I just have my trusty old Chinese cheapo uh, slide, slide caliper here. So, Okay, so we've got our float out here on our secondary circuit, and we want a 5 8 fuel level from the top of our float here to our carburetor body. So we're going to take our needle nose pliers here, hold it square to the tang, right like that, so that the edge of the needle nose plier that we're bending against is square. And then we're just going to give it a little bend by pushing down here. All right, we'll put our needle back on and check our height again. You have to put the needle back on because the needle has to be bottomed in the seat um, of, our, of our float jet. So we just push it down, light pressure, you don't want to force it down in there. Yeah. All right. So we've got our float level right on our primary bowl and on our secondary bowl. Um, the floats are not rubbing on the sides of the bowl, that's good. Okay guys, with everything finished up inside the float bowls and our Venturi's in place, all we've got to do now is drop the top on and we're good to go. Connect up our choke linkage and uh, tighten up our screws. So uh, the only gotcha here is to make sure that the vacuum hole for our vacuum secondaries is in the right position, the right orientation of your gasket. Don't get it backwards. Um, I've gone ahead and thrown our secondary cover on just by finger tight here just until I get the new vacuum secondary uh, diaphragm. So we take, uh, get your gasket into place, take your top, and you want to uh, close, your, close your choke and get that linkage into the choke linkage arm and then drop the body, the, the body top onto our body. So we'll start with a center bolt, get that in a few threads, and then start running in the remaining screws. Then uh, just could give it a little pull, and start in your crosshatch, tightening up your small screws. Got to uh, put our clip, our little hitch clip, over the end of our end of our linkage and we are done with the assembly of the carburetor. Alright so that's how we rebuild one of these 4100 carburetors or really any four barrel slash two barrel carb. The 2100 would be the same exact process without the secondaries. Um, same thing. 
I would urge you after rebuilding your card to go through the specifications listed for your make and model, which is what I'm going to do, and measure, take the rule that they provide you, and measure all of your dimensions. Uh, it gives you a list of different things to check. If your car was working perfectly fine before, uh, I suppose you could skip some of that, uh, but it's probably a good idea to go through and give yourself a good baseline on the carburetor so that when you fire up the car for the first time with a rebuilt carb, you don't have to, uh, you know, you're not starting from an unknown variable. So there you go. That's how to rebuild the Autolite slash Motocraft 4100 carburetor or 2100 carburetor in your Ford. Not a very hard process. It's relatively simple. Only needs a few, few normal hand tools. Um, and as long as you take your time and are meticulous and well organized uh, so that you don't mix any of the screws up or mix up any of the components or lose any of the little check balls, you'll be good to go. It's uh, very straightforward. And for you Ford OBS guys, I know the Mustang isn't everybody's cup of tea on my channel, uh, but we've got more OBS stuff coming soon. Kevin has ordered all of the components for hydro boosting his truck and getting rid of the power master on his 460. So you're going to want to catch that video coming up uh, here in the next couple weeks. But for me today guys, for the Vintage Speed Garage, that's it. That's a wrap. That's how you rebuild your carburetor. Thank you for watching. Uh, please click like and subscribe.